Welcome to this video designed to help you set up Finale for efficient and easy use for music related assignments. Bear in mind that the key to making Finale an easy and fun program to use is learning and practicing a few shortcuts. So you have to do a little practice to really get to the point where it's going to flow for you. Let's get started with setting up Finale for ideal operation. We'll start by setting up a few crucial preferences. You need to set up autosave. Set up autosave by going to the finale menu, choose preferences, save and print, and then choose autosave every five minutes. The next box doesn't need to be checked, but you do want to have this, these other two boxes checked. Next, go to the folders menu and you'll see where your autosave files will be saved in the event that you have to retrieve information that was lost because of a crash. We're going to be focusing on simple entry and when you're using simple entry two particular palettes of tools are useful to show. The tool palettes are available underneath the window menu and you want the main tool palette and also the simple entry palette. You can also access tools through the tools menu here. One of the first things I always like to warn people about in Finale is that there are certain default settings that are not useful, in fact, will mess you up. And one of them is in the chord tool. The chord tool looks like this. Click on there, and you'll see a chord menu appears. Click on that, and you should always deselect enable chord playback. It will probably be checked. You want to uncheck it. And the next tool that we need to know about is the score manager, and that is available under the window menu. Click there. This is where we load our uh, add or delete instruments and where we load our sounds. The default thing in Finale is to play sounds only through MIDI like this. And these sounds don't aren't very good. So it's better to choose to play through audio units. And the Garretton sampled sound should load. Double check that. You can go under audio units, banks, and effects. And you should see an ARIA player in the window here. That's what will play back your... Um, sampled sounds. You can choose different sounds from the Garretton libraries, all kinds of woodwinds, brass. Next let's deal with playback. Playback uh, has its own tool, playback controls, under the window menu. Um, I'm not a big fan of it and I'll show you a better alternative, but for now I'll just show you the basics of how it works. It's this little floating window. You click on the triangle there to get more options. I would say always deselect human playback and go to none. It will make your playback happen faster. Um, I would say select this to leftmost measure and always end a piece here. Um, you can also um, adjust tempo and other things here. It's pretty easy to figure it out for yourself. And now setting up sounds, you go back over to MIDI audio. We've already set up our sounds. Back your audio, you come down here to device setup, audio setup, and you can see where your source audio is coming from and how it's playing back. I'm playing back through the interface, but you could also be playing back through just the built-in output. Um, you can test the output by hitting this button. There are some very helpful playback shortcuts, which I recommend that you use. I've listed them here. The most helpful ones are ones that I'll show you in this video, but all of these can be helpful. I recommend them over using the playback window most of the time. So I'm gonna close the playback window because these shortcuts only work if you close this. And I've entered a few notes, as you can see, just to have something to listen to. You have to be in what's called the selection tool, which looks like that. And here's the first shortcut we're gonna learn, which is escape. Escape gets you to the selection tool. So if I purposely select another tool and I hit escape, I will go right to the selection tool. These kinds of shortcuts will save you a lot of trouble and a lot of um, time and also possible repetitive stress injury. It will prevent that. So now we are in the selection tool. When you click on a measure and or select a measure and then you control click, you get what's called a contextual menu. And most of what you're going to need to do in a typical finale session will be in this menu. So the playback shortcuts I recommend. The first one is when you're on a selected measure, wherever it is in the piece, you just simply hit the space bar and then click, and it will play back that note. If I start it here, it will play this, and then it will proceed on to the next one. Is select a measure and then space bar, click. The next one is to do, and you can do this 
in the selection tool or even in the simple entry tool as I am now, I'm going to go back to the selection tool, you can hold down option and space bar and move the cursor at the speed that you want the playback to happen. So I'm doing that right now, option plus space bar. And then I can move along and play back at a tempo that is suitable for me checking chords or checking my music. So those are the two most useful playback shortcuts. Now we'll go over to the expression tool. This is mainly for doing analysis in Finale and for doing dynamics, at least for music students. This document is what's called a template. It has been prepared by your teacher or somebody else to have certain things in it that make your job easier when you're doing an assignment. So this template has loaded in it something that would not be in a typical default document. And what, what I'm referring to are these analysis symbols that are unique to Berkeley. The way you access them is through something called the expression tool, which is right here. Now if we click on that and we just click on a measure, double click, you'll see a whole bunch of options open to us. Dynamics, tempo marks, etc. Kind of all the normal stuff you would need to do a score. But then you get down to these new ones here for this particular um, template. Roman numerals are available. Graphical symbols to Berkeley. Arrows, brackets, dotted arrows, dotted brackets, etc. Some scale labeling notes. Now the best way to use them is to have them accessible via shortcuts that you can program yourself or come pre-programmed. You'll know that they have a shortcut if there is a number uh, on the window here. And the way you program a shortcut is by holding down shift and then hitting the shortcut that you want. So a number or a letter, by the way. So for example, if I wanted this chord to be the number five, I would just simply hold down shift and then press down five and you can see now it's five. Now what does that mean? That means that when I go here and if I want to put that symbol here, all I have to do, as long as I'm in that tool, is hold down five and click and it will appear. This particular template has shortcuts programmed for numbers. One key is one major seven, the two is two minor seven and so on. So I could do this 251 here by holding down 2, click, holding down 5, click, and holding down 1 to get my 1 major 7, click. And then it has the arrow that we use for dominant resolution. It appeared up there. I just have to drag it down. And it has the bracket under the letter B, so I hold down B and I click that. And I've gotten my analysis happening pretty fast. As I mentioned before, the chord tool looks like that. When you click on it, you get a chord menu, and you have various options. Remember, you have to just deselect enable chord playback. The way you input chords is fairly intuitive. Uh, let's do a D minor seven. I'll get rid of that. I'm just clicking on this measure once. I'm in the chord tool. I do a capital D, then my minus symbol, and then a seven. Okay, that's how we enter chord symbols. You can also enter tensions and so on. I'll show you how to do that later. Filter is under the edit menu. You go down here, click to use it, and then click here to edit it. What it is is the option to copy or not copy any chosen item. So right now, all that the filter will copy are notes. Uh, if, um, in this case, what I want to copy are, I want to copy some chord symbols over to the second page. So I'm going to uh, choose chord symbols, and I'm going to deselect notes, because I don't want to copy the notes. And I would say OK. Then I would go to the selection tool by hitting Escape. I would click on the first measure of chords that I want to copy and shift click on the last measure of chords I want to copy. This is a way to um, get a selection. And then because the, um, at the filter is engaged right now, if I just do command C for copy and bring it over here, first measure and do that, I will get those chord symbols exactly as they were. So I'll, now in this particular assignment, I'm also going to need to be able to copy the notes of chords that are written here over to the second page. So in that case, I would go to the filter and I would edit it and I would say, okay, I want to copy only notes and I would deselect the chords if I didn't want to copy them and do this. And then I would select my notes, do this, come over here and paste and I would get just the notes, nothing else. So that's the filter. This last part of the video is about essential shortcuts and note entry. So watch it carefully, you might need to rewatch it a bit. L a laptop, the concept is that both of your hands are working together efficiently instead of just taking one hand and moving it around a lot. So the left hand is going to mainly be doing numbers, you know, the durations of the notes. It's going to do intervals and it's going to do ties and things like that. And then the right hand is going to be um, 
moving notes around, entering notes, um, and uh, kind of putting the finishing touches on notes. Choose the Simple Entry tool by clicking on any of these notes in the Simple Entry palette or on this Simple Entry icon. And then you have a Simple Entry menu. You click on there, Simple Entry options, deselect the first four, edit keyboard shortcuts, see them here, choose laptop shortcut table. You probably have default shortcut table. Change it to laptop shortcut table. Click out of that, click out of this, then go over to the Apple, choose system preferences, and choose keyboard, and make sure that this top window is chosen. Now what this will do is it will change the use of your function keys, the F keys at the top of your laptop keyboard. They, it will make it possible for you to use those more efficiently in Finale, for example, to make intervals. Uh, what it will also do is stop them from doing what they used to do, which is turn up and down the volume of your computer and so on, and brighten the screen. But you can get those functions back by just holding down the FN key, which is at the far left bottom of your computer keyboard. Practice with our new uh, shortcuts. So choose a simple entry note, it's a quarter note. Here's how it works. Your left hand is poised over the number keys at the top of your laptop. And the number keys will, uh, pinky hits three, that makes a 16th note. Th ring finger hits four, that's an eighth. Middle hits five, that's a quarter. Index hits six, that's a half note. Index moves over and hits seven, that's a whole note. Let's go to a quarter note and let's move our trackpad down to an F and then click and that will enter the note. Our left hand is going to be controlling durations for now. Let's get our right hand going. Our right hand is going to be over uh, um, doing arrows. Now arrows will move a note once it's been entered. So if I hit up arrow, up, and if I hit down arrow, it moves it down. Um, as I'm about to enter, if I, if I want to affect the next note, I could arrow over to select what's called the caret. And now that's a potential note, has not, has not been entered yet. I can move it up and down with the arrow until I'm ready to enter it. If I want to get a C, then I can hit return with my right hand. And I So using these um, functionalities with our left and right hand, let's enter some notes. So left hand, change to an eighth note by hitting four. Right hand, arrow down and give me a G on the second line of the staff. Now hit return with your right hand. Now with your right hand, hit arrow up to give an A. With your right hand, hit enter. Time for a rest. Let's hit, uh, we want a quarter note rest. Uh, you can hit the number zero and whatever value currently displayed will enter that rest. Now finally, let's talk about chords. Chords are best entered with a MIDI keyboard, but if you don't have one, you can use the function keys. So let's say we wanted to do a D minor seven uh, root position voicing. I would enter my first note and then I would go to the function keys. Now these are the top keys, the F keys at the top of your keyboard. And I would hit, because the chord is built in thirds, I would hit F3 and I get my D minor seven. And then using the following shortcuts, you could move down for voice leading. Um, when a note is selected, if you want to um, move to another note in the chord, you just do command arrow and down or up through the chord. When you've gotten to a note you want to manipulate, you can now take your hand away from the command key and it will move the note up or down. And if you do shift, it'll put down an octave. So I'm gonna go down an octave by doing shift arrow down. Finally, we're back. The most useful shortcuts in Finale, which are note moving shortcuts that are in the selection tool uh, around. I could select it and if I hit six, it will move down by step. If I hit seven, it will move up by step. If I hit eight it will move down an octave and if I hit nine it will move up an octave. You can also select portions of a measure so if I wanted to put that up an octave I could do that and hit nine and now it's up an octave. If Again if you're doing an assignment and the teacher has made a template always use that template. If you get stuck you can often get an answer by googling of course or ask the teacher and there's also some very good quick start videos under the finale help menu uh, which is available anytime you're in a finale document right here. These quick start videos are actually very good.